Welcome back to a very special edition of The New Normal with Natasha. And after months of trying to convince our next guest, he finally said yes. You know him as one of the best men in morning radio, and I know him as my morning husband and best friend. We finally have him, Freeway Frank. Hi, Bello. Natasha, great to see you. So happy to be on The New Normal. Thank you for having me on. Okay, well, you don't have to thank me. You're welcome here anytime. But um, a lot of people are going through uh, an uncertain time in their lives because of COVID. They were let go from their jobs. And I think you and I can relate to being let go because you and I were let go from our jobs about a year ago. So what advice would you give to anyone right now who's kind of trying to figure out their next chapter? Well, I think this is a great opportunity since, you know, COVID hit for a lot of people to do things they've always wanted to do because they're spending more time at home, whether they're chores or errands, and at the same time working on the best you that you can be career-wise and as a person. So that has been the positive part for me. I don't miss how busy my life used to be. I don't miss that. I don't miss getting, you know what, not one day has gone by in the last year where I thought, man, I wish I could get up at the crack of dawn again, <laughs> drink two or three coffees before I get in and start working and being energized at, you know, 530 in the morning. I, I miss the gig. I really miss working with you. I would love nothing more to have the opportunity to work with you again one day. And I hope that opportunity comes. And if it doesn't, we had a hell of a time. And I thank you for always coming in every day, positive. And no matter what, we were like husband and wife. We had our ups and downs, but we had a lot more ups and downs. You know, there are so many things that I think uh, our audience wants to know about what happened uh, when you and I were let go from our jobs. Back in August of 2019, we went on vacation. When we came back, we were let go. And uh, we still don't have any answers and we still don't know why we were let go. Um, but what's been really great is having the continued love and support from our radio family. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there, there's been, again, we were asked, so over the course of, um, you know, nine years being with this company to open up our lives, share our specific stories, like Natasha going through a divorce, being a single mom. Uh, myself and Stephanie trying to have kids, yet alone one kid, and our process, whatever. But we shared all those stories on the air. And then nine years later, you come back from vacation, go back into work, and then lose our jobs with no explanation, without uh, being able to tell our audience who we were asked to share our lives with and open up with and be true and be real with and be transparent, expose everything. Uh, so they could always relate to us. And now we had no final goodbye, no explanation, no press release from the company to say, here's what happened. Maybe it was budgetary. Uh, maybe there was uh, whatever, whatever the reason was. We never got a reason uh, to just wipe us off the face of the earth like we never existed. Right. Was right. truly, truly painful for both of us. And... Um, I'm not angry. I was angry. I'm not bitter. I was bitter, but I'm still extremely disappointed in the way it was done. People then had a perception and people came up with their own assumptions as to why you and I were let go. And the assumptions were all false. And then rumors started to happen. What that does is jeopardize our or put in question our reputation and as to what we did to deserve such a departure. Some of the rumors that were going around was that you and I were having an affair. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, because it would never happen. Because No offense, uh, and I love you no to death. No offense but... taken. <laughs> no offense but taken. That was, a... that was the funniest one, and it was ridiculous. It was absolutely... Um, how hurtful was it for you to hear that maybe the reason why we were let go was because we were too ethnic. No race ever wants to hear that you were too anything, right? Uh, it's painful for a lot of people, a lot of people going through that right now. Some people who have been suffering that for centuries. I think people just need to think before they speak sometimes. So um, 
you know, a lot of the questions that I get from people are, are you and Freeway really good friends? And I've always said to anybody who's ever asked me is like, Freeway stands up for me and looks out for me like no one else. And he always had my back during that morning show. And unfortunately, um, during those nine years, and I think even way back when I was interning, when I was in my 20s, is radio is a very male-dominated industry. And you used to get so angry at me for saying it's a boys' club because you used to take such offense to it. And I was like, I'm not referring to you, but in general, the environment that we're in is a boys' club. Because if I walked into a, a meeting or an office without you on my side, there was no way I was going to be heard. The reason why I never wanted to hear the term boys club is because I'm equal opportunity all the way. But then I witnessed some things happen during the course of our nine years there that were shocking to me. And uh, specific things that were said to you, which I, was, I couldn't believe. And I was so disappointed in the people who said what they said. In my experience, the more a woman speaks up and stands up for herself and uses her voice, the more she risks in that environment losing her job, unless she doesn't have a male to support her and back her up. If a woman is outspoken, she has a feisty personality or she's out of control, whatever case, that mentality that has to go and it still exists. It really does. It, it brings back feelings that I was going through that really, it, re, it really got to me. Some of the things that were said either directly or indirectly that hurt me. I too was bullied by several people in the company, specifically one. So even though I've never been one to go down that road and I've been blessed to not have true mental health issues, and we all go through good and bad times, some people more than others, this gave us a lot of anxiety made us vulnerable. And whether we had done something which we didn't or their miscalculated termination of both you and I made it seem that way, it was our reputation that was compromised. Our reputation. Why has it taken you so long to come on the new normal and show your face here? Because you didn't invite me on the show. Not <laughs> You had, you had cooks and presidents and all these other people and freeway. Well, we'll get them later. Well, you know, I, I get it. Natasha, you wanted to warm up the show with, with, with other people, and then you wanted to save the best for last. I get it. Thank you so much. I asked you first, and you were kind of like, no, nah, I don't feel it. Yeah, well, I feel it now. I see you in your basement, and I know you're not only there just because we're doing this interview, but you're building your podcast, and you are way too talented. You are way too talented to not be doing anything. And I know I used to joke that after 9 o'clock you did nothing, but when is this podcast going to be launched? Because I think the world wants to hear from Freeway Frank. Okay, well, for the first time revealed on the new normal with the lovely Natasha Gargiulo, I will say the fall. And the reason why is um, because of what I'm doing and how I'll be doing it and what the show is going to be about, I'm going to need to uh, have people coming over to my house. So once I feel that I can start doing that, possibly in the, in the fall, I'll be on with the new show. And so I ask everybody this question. When the reset button is finally hit, what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, it's kind of been, you know, like they're trying to hit it. And it's like, <laughs> it's like when you're at the uh, amusement park at La Road, you know, and you have that, that mallet and those things are coming out and you're trying to hit, you're trying to hit the reset button and it won't allow you to hit. But I can't wait for the day when I can go back into a crowd of people like at the Bell Center and watch a good hockey game and go for a San Cassette before and hang out and all have appies and not have to wear these masks, you know, and I just want it to go back to normal. I can't wait for that reset button to be pressed so that I can come up and give you a big hug. I miss you and I love you very much. I can't wait. Love you too. And I'll be hugging you too. It'll be, will it be, no, it'll be the regular hug, not the COVID yeah. hug. Oh, when you're dancing in the sixth grade and you're holding each other like, oh, yeah. I am a man who will fight for your own.
<laughs> we are not doing the sixth grade dance. No, we're not. It's oh. going to be a hug, a tight hug with a lot yeah. of love. Okay. Thanks for having me on The New Normal. I appreciate it. When's the check going to be in the mail? Just are you, Do you pay your guests on the show? How does that work? Was this free? It was free, right? Cut. Okay, bye. Cut. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>